perhaps you could just sort of talk a little bit about yourself and the impact that Sufism <laughs> and the work of Shah has had on you in your life and your work, which I mean, it's, a, it's a huge subject, but maybe you can just... This is going to cost me, you know, <laughs> because talk among my, <laughs> about myself is exactly what I should not do. We are trying to talk about the impact that this teaching have in us, had in us, and that's everything but myself. Um, my uh, friend Arif Shah says always uh, grabbing the programs or the catalogs of my works, he says, me by me. <laughs> so uh, I don't want to talk about me, but I can say that I've been, since I was 19, I think, for 50 years or more, I've been interested and impacted and influenced by Sufism, or as we call it, the tradition. Um, the magnitude of this impact cannot be assessed by me at all. I just can say that it is immense, uh, that the work of Idrisha is enormous, that we have a, an incredible depth because he put in a context an enormous amount of knowledge that the whole family, Shah family, uh, is responsible for having brought uh, this incredible body of knowledge, this culture. Actually, I think that the real term is a, is a civilization. This is a civilization uh, that is being brought to us and is available to us and its impact will only be known through the years. For the moment, we just know that this has influenced lots of people and produced a lot of impact. But how it will really impact the culture is something that we cannot define now. Yeah, well, it contains some of the comedic elements that are typical of, of Sufism, you know. So it's a mixture of meeting strange people and and strange thing happening. But strange uh, becomes natural after a while. And um, what seems to be magical becomes every day. And every day becomes magical, as Shah says in one of his books. I'm not quoting exactly, but, but that's the idea. The thing is that the whole universe that was I think known by a part of us because I think that we remember things more than learning them. I think that these things have, are in us. I don't know where. I think that uh, one theory that was explained to me by uh, the Shahs was that somewhere in our genetic line we have been in touch our genetic line has been in touch with this um, knowledge and that's why it's so familiar. It's not some foreign thing. But that's an explanation given by them. I, I accept it. What I know is that it wasn't foreign when it was first presented to me. It was very familiar. And um, yes, a succession of crazy events, as you can imagine. I, you know, I can make several movies about it. Um, I, 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 going back to this New Year's party in 68 or 69, where I met for the first time Idris Shah, who was wearing this golden outfit. We were dressed all as the Thousand and One Nights. And, uh, Amina, uh, the older sister, who was a very elegant woman, imposing creature, um, have had an accident and broke a leg. But of course she was dressed as a bird of paradise on a wheelchair <laughs> and with all the blue feathers of the world. And uh, all of these, for somebody who was 20 from Argentina, feel completely natural, and I cannot tell you why. You know what I'm saying? Um, there were elements that 
outside of a context you cannot explain. I mean, I remember the moment I put my leg out of the car arriving to this party in a ridiculous outfit of, you know, golden turban or silver turban. And, and Omar Ali Shah was standing at the door and there were two inflatable elephants, white elephant on both sides. And he looked at me and I fell completely ridiculous and absolutely idiotic. And also, I, my feeling was that I'd been seen totally by somebody, which I never had before. I was being seen through like an X-ray machine. It was very strong and it was the first thing that party. This is to say that everything was funny and incredible and absurd and and at the same time, all kinds of things happen that were not, were of another <laughs> kind, yeah? The certain of these stories become archetypal in, in our lives, and it's because they touch something central and important. In my case was, from the beginning, two stories. One is the man with inexplicable life, <clears throat> which is basically how uh, the contact with uh, Hidra, the so-called green man, the invisible guide of the seeker of truth, as in the traditional stories exist, how this creature from another universe guides a guy through his life. And when the moment comes to tell the life about the life of this man, the biographers only get everything but hither. And it doesn't make any sense, so they invent uh, adequate biography for this guy. But that thing, the, the, the fact that there is one element that you really cannot talk about, that is what makes all the difference, is, is the center of all this conversation. The other story is a short story of Nasruddin that nobody seems to understand, and I keep repeating it for 50 years, and nobody gets it, but here it goes, it's very short. Nasruddin is in his garden, sitting surrounded by birds, flowers, and beautifully sitting there, having a good time, and the neighbor asks, what are you doing, Nasruddin? And he says, I'm climbing the Great Pyramid. And the guy says, but well, you're nowhere near the Great Pyramid. And that's what he says, well, yeah, but look, birds, <laughs> flowers. Is there a better way to climb the Great Pyramid? 